Hello, hello. All right, guys. We're live. Welcome to Wednesday Night Standard here at GameSwap in Mason, Ohio. My name is Patrick R. Savage, and I'm joined tonight by Justin Gebbing. How you doing, yeah, Justin? Me. I'm doing good. Uh, excited to call some Standard, some Merge Boneyard. That's yeah, a, it's a standard staple. From when I oh, yeah. It's great. Now, it's a uh, land that is only seeing play in exactly one deck, blue and that's blue-black blue control. control. Oh, oh, we got, we got uh, the aggro, uh, the, the best Bomac rating goblin I've ever seen. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. I can never figure out how to play it. I have been learning how to play recently. I was playing um, Marty Vehicles. Yeah. Uh, the deck that you have experience with. Yeah, I did pretty well at a PPTQ with it. And I, if I remember correctly, I sided out Beaumont Courier every time. <laughs> uh, mostly because I was stuck against a lot of grindy decks. And it just didn't feel very good in the grindy matchups. Because I, I was slowing my deck down to do it. So Yeah. Now, it looks like uh, Chris's deck name is a little wrong. He is actually on red-black aggro, not mono-red aggro. As you yeah. can see by the Dread Wanderer and Dragon Skull Summit that he has played. I remember when uh, that was in uh, Mono Black Zombies. That was an annoying card to deal with. I just played four copies of Magma Spray. I didn't. You should have. Card's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, typically, what I did, I, I was playing Team Energy at the time, so I just kind of ran over it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, at that point, it was Marvel. Yeah, I was I was dying to Marvel and okay. running over the other fair decks. Yeah, I was playing blue red control, so I was just trying to counter everything and then just kill them with Gear Hulks or Dragon Master Outcast. That card was great. Isn't that how you play the game always? Yes. All right, so we've reached the quintessential turn for the Glimmer for the blue black control, right? Yeah, he right now he needs some removal. He needs to be able to deal with these uh, little guys that Chris has thrown, and it doesn't look like he has that. Yeah, I'll say. Honestly, Chris doesn't even really need to play anything from here to just close the game. No, what, from a, what Dakota's hand looked like when I got a good look, it looks like another land, a Disallow, two copies of Torrential Gear Hulk, and then I think a Commit Memory. But he definitely has the Glimmer. Like, this turn is so, like, dependent on him casting Glimmer, and is there, like, a solid black board wipe? Right uh, now? he, I doubt he's playing any main deck copies of, uh... Bontus, Golden Demise, Golden I Bontus, could yeah. see a Bontus, Bontus Last Reckoning. But on this, this is a yeah, this this makes sense there. very good start. Oh, Chris just showed Dakota the guard he put on it there. I believe it was another copy of Bomat Courier. So. Alright, so this turn, he really needs to... Okay, that's awkward. Um, Dakota played the Swamp here. But both of the lands in his hand are tap lands. Interesting. Okay. So if he doesn't draw an untap land this turn, he can't play Torrential Gear Hulk. Doesn't that just tax him into playing the Glimmer of Genius now? Well, I think he was part. His hand doesn't do anything anyway, so he was gonna do that anyway. But now he like can't keep interaction. He has to keep. Make sure he keeps an untap land. Because if he can't play Gear Hulk next turn, he's just gonna die. Yeah. Like, he wants to keep that Fatal Push, and he might have to, but... Well, you have to keep the Fatal Push. You have here. to keep like the Fatal Push. You yeah. get to cast it now, which is nice, but... It's just... Did he find the untapped land? We're all in suspense. Because if he doesn't... He found another Fatal Push. Did he? Yeah, he looked... That was a... I mean, the Fatal Push is probably just as good, to be honest. But he can't play Gear Hulk next turn, and this deck is so reliant on playing Gear Hulk on curve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a stabilize... He also yeah, does not currently have an answer to a Hazred or a Chandra if it comes down. And the fact that we did this in combat means if Chris has like a Chandra, he can just slam it. Yeah, and pushing Dakota, the you're just going to die. Yeah, pushing the Bowman Carrier there is very good. And how many cards does Chris have in hand right now? Uh, Can't be too many. It's four or five, but I remember seeing a Hazret and yeah. at least a Hazret, And I don't know what card he's going to trade Bowman Carrier for. Or Kindling, oh, Kindling Phoenix. Phoenix. All right, there you go. Oh, Lord. All right. Uh, so we're gonna need Dakota to find a uh, Raska's Contempt. So Contempt gets him back in the game pretty easy. Yeah, but he doesn't. I don't think he has that. He did find the Untapped Land to play Gear Hulk. That's another push. So he's able to Gear Hulk. He's gonna take four this turn. Yeah, he can Gear Hulk and push. 
And if Chris has any burn, if Chris has an abrade, he's got magma spray. He dead. Doesn't look like there's an abrade in his hand. If there's an abrade, he's dead. Yeah, just game's over. Yeah, swing, turn him sideways. What we got? I don't think there's any way. All right, six mana. Dakota might have Dakota to shock lightning straight. I can't tell what that card is in his hand. Yeah, you have to push there and then try to block. Chris, you letting him block? Letting him block. All right. Okay, you must not have anything to do. Well, he's got one more turn. Hopefully. He'll oh, or you have his lightning strike. Yay, okay, yeah, burn. I could, yeah, I couldn't tell what that was. I kept looking at it. I was like, is that... Is that is Luckily, Chris could tell what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Real quick, Justin, can you get the table and, like, playmat centered? It's a at an angle. Uh, just quick, uh, <laughs> quick letting you guys know, we actually do not have our computer with us right now, so if you guys are posting stuff in the Twitch comments, we will get to those when we get our laptop back. Our producer yep. is doing some stuff with it right now, so if we don't uh, answer your question, if we don't respond to any comments, we will do so in time. I'll just pull it up on my phone. That works too. Yeah. I always just forget about the innovation of cell phones and technology. Uh, it's a wonderful time that we live in where we don't have to leave our toilets <laughs> just about ever. There's 22. It's pretty good. Okay. Pretty good viewers. Yeah. So, wh what's your opinions on this standard format right now? I've actually really liked the standard format. Uh, I don't. Unfortunately, don't get to play too much. But when I have, like, I've been, I've piloted two different decks to top eights and two different PPTQs. So, like, uh, I, like, I, I feel like the format you can just play just about whatever you can, like, you want to almost. Um, as far as like you know, standard goes, you, you yeah. just play the powerful mythics or whatever, uh, and you'll you'll be solid. Like, yeah, there's uh, a, there's a lot of different decks you could run right now. Um, as long as you like understand what's going on. Yeah, are you playing in uh, SCG Cincy at all? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not. I got some plans. Uh, I have to do some work. Uh, if I was, I would be playing Standard, and I think I'd be on Marty Vehicles or either Green Red Monsters there. Okay. I believe our Standard player is currently going to be on Green Black Ramp. Yeah. The Masterminds Acquisition deck. Yeah, Logan was telling me about that. It's a deck that... Uh, He's been playing a lot. It's one that uh, our standard player, which was originally going to be Logan, has now switched to Zachary West, yep. our other fellow commentator. Has uh, He's decided that he wants to be on standard. Logan will be on legacy. I'm still sticking with modern. Yep. But he's been playing green-black acquisition online, and the thing we've been finding is that we have been destroying these blue-black decks. Yeah, just like isn't like your end game just so much better than like the yeah, and also like, we just have access to one. I think our current list is one Carnage Tyrant main, one side. So I mean, isn't it just like a seventy-five card deck with basically? Because you have Masterminds in yeah. so we have a main deck uh, Carnage Tyrant. We also have one of the boards we've access to two Carnage Tyrants game one, mm -hmm. which is just lights out. Like blue black control, I believe has zero ways to answer it. Double in block game one with the Gearhawks. You can double block with gear hulks, but uh, moment of craving disrupts that somewhat. I mean, I wholeheartedly agree. It's yeah. not a good plan. I was yeah. Like. Uh, the only real way they have to answer it is to commit the carnage tyrant while it's on the stack. Yeah. While it's on the stack, and then to somehow shuffle your library via memory or field of ruin. Yeah. Even that's just more delaying the problem than actually solving it. So we also have. Uh, Currently, one main deck copy of Profane Procession. Profane Procession. Oh, that's a real good one. I remember that. Blue. One. That's just if that resolves. That's lights out against blue black control. They can't. They just can't win. Just cannot beat it. They they'd have to like disallow the ability, and even then, that's just again yeah. delaying the problem. So it's a deck we've been having a lot of success with. Uh, we're kind of just hoping no one's playing approach when we get there. Uh, is Approach even seen play anymore? Some. There's okay. still people who still just like playing the control deck with the says I win. I thought people were jumping towards the uh, cycle deck these days. That's a matchup that's also kind of uh, annoying. Uh, we can't answer enchantments that well. 
And we're just kind of relying on people not not wanting to play that, that blue-white control deck. So we can still beat them. It's pretty easy. Yeah. We've lost Legacy on the board to, like, Hit fight the... Approach, fight Drakehaven. Looks like Dakota is on a mulligan at six right now. He looked. I don't know why he looked. It's never going to give you anything. I good actually, information. I actually always look. I do, too. Just for, <laughs> like, I have, I'm at a point where it doesn't impact my mulligan decisions anymore. So Yeah, like just I fun. understand what is and isn't, like, a good keep. So it's just like... Well, if I did do it, if mm -hmm. I wanted to be greedy, what would have happened? Yeah, the la the hands that always get me are like, I had one uh, yesterday on camera actually against uh, Elves, it was game two, Yeah. and I let Mulligan to six, my opening hand is three lands, three Serum Visions. Three lands, Serum Visions. I would have kept that. I, I kept, <laughs> I kept that, uh, mainly because in that matchup, the, you just need to find a Wrath. Yeah, and like, that card just digs hard for a wrath. I had the lands, I had the dig, so I was like, sure. I don't know what five would be enough. better in that though. Like you have to hope for three lands, serum visions, path, maybe. It was like uh, I would say three lands, uh, path, and verdict. Actually, no, against elves, wrath. Yeah, I want wrath more than verdict, but still. It's maybe, yeah, I don't know. Well, this six looks keepable. He's got a contraband kingpin into a. Disallow into a Gearhawk. Gearhawk's kind of irrelevant right now, but... Yeah, I'm interested to see what Dakota has after sideboard, because Disallow is actually not a card I like in this matchup a lot from the blue-black side. It's generally very slow. You don't want to trade your three-mana card for a bunch of their, like, one- and two-mana stuff. Leading on Swamps. Good sign. Oh, Always oh, got Duress. duress. So Bad downhill. sign. Bad sign. Downhill. Uh, looks like... Well, well, now he doesn't have to worry about casting that Duress. Does not I mean disallow? Uh, disallow. You're yeah, because right. you can't cast anymore. Yeah. It's a fairly duress-proof hand, but. Yeah. And this is why people play Contraband Kingpin over Gifted Aetherborn. It's because Chris has a copy of Lightning Strike in his hand. Three does not equal four. Yeah. I remember uh, playing against that uh, Bomat Courier. It was like the most awkward card versus that thing. Mm -hmm. I hated it. And I was mm -hmm. like. Braid. We could two for one ourselves if we want to. I don't think Double Chris swamp. has red, to be honest. Does he not have red? Yeah. Seems. So he, I mean, he, I know he's heavier in the black splash than most black red aggro decks, but that's kind of crazy if he doesn't have a red mana. And no, he, he doesn't. Do a, he does not. Just drew a double red card. Oh, no. You know how Dakota's been finding lands? I think he found a glimmer. Is he going to pull away with this game? Uh, well, there's a Dragon's Quest okay. so that'll help, I'll say. It's probably, like, the uh, ideal turn. Like, I mean, last turn would have been nice, too, but... Well, I mean, last turn he missed the land drop, so... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Last turn, if he had it, it would have been great, but... Um, Is so, that a Earthshaker Chris, I don't generate? think he wants to be on the, like, aggro goblin or Earthshaker plan here. He needs to get that Contraband Kingpin off to, like, le start leveraging. Well, he doesn't have a good way to... He can't do that yet. I mean, he could attack, and then... Well, I mean... I mean, what's that scrap heap gonna do anyways? I mean... Dakota's not gonna attack. So yeah. we're just gonna... We're just gonna kinda sit here. I think, to me, I would wanna play the Earthshaker here. And then attack with... For five. Because you have the Fanatical Firebrand, you have a Braid and Lightning Strike in your hands. If you draw another red source, you can get the Contraband King put off the table. But this is the big thing. Dakota gets classed Glimmer of Genius, and that's the turning point for this deck. Once they get to do that, they get to find their lands, find their interaction, and he's going to be able to play a Gear Hulk and cast that again on turn yeah. six. Seeing, yeah, seeing up to four cards isn't always winning the game, but it's definitely going to put Chris in a bind. Did he not find a fifth I don't, land? I don't think Dakota has a fifth land. There's a lot of Raska's Contempts in his hand, so... Which I would definitely throw one at this Grounder. Well, he can't. He's got Island, Island, Swamp, Field of Ruin. Oh, no. Yeah, so... These mana bases. Dakota's actually probably fine. Yeah, I'll say, uh... I've, uh, I've been, uh... Like, playing Field of Ruin every time I, like, have it in my opening hand. It's just kind of, like, the most awkward card, like... In this deck, it is because blue back control is pretty color-intensive. You want black on turn one, blue on turn two, double uh, blue on turn three, double, double blue on turn on three, turn four. double black on turn four, as you said. Uh, so like these colorless lands are kind of a cost, but so there's enough enough. He did find a mountain. 
Oh, that's, that's good. good. Okay. There's enough flip lands going around right now that I think Field of Ruin is necessary. No, I agree. It's uh, also like feels like uh, enchantment and artifact removal is at an all-time high for standard right now. Mm -hmm. Naturalize can be played. Actual playable. We're going to abrade. Does Chris have another abrade in his hand? I think he does. Okay. So I was say, I would not like to use this abrade if I don't have another one because of lightning. I have lightning strike, and I don't want to just die to gear hulks. Yeah, uh, Crit. I guess he's got magma spray. No, he's gonna he's gonna lightning. Oh no! No, he's no, he's got the, the yeah. He's gonna okay. use the fanatical firebrand to just ping that away. Tap target you. See that disallow here would be insane. The disallow would be very good here. That's fine. All right, so we got five coming. Are we? We're gonna we're gonna feel field of ruin. Does Dakota have an? If Dakota has another spell to pair with this, like a fatal push or a moment of craving, then this is gonna be a really good turn for him. Moment of craving would be very very good. I think moment of craving is probably his, the best thing he could cast right now. Yeah. Kill that Earthshaker Kenra, and then we can untap and Veraska's contempt. I'll say if he doesn't actually if we have want anything, to. Uh, it's pretty risky giving him another red mana for his second main phase. Yeah, um, that's, that's one thing. You do semi-ramp your opponent in this case. Yeah. Which is... An extra mana. I'm so, sure but it looks like something. he does have a moment of craving here. Know, that's good. Which, this makes sense now. We get instead go to 14 mm -hmm. after everything's said and done. Or maybe... So, we'll go up to 17 and take 3 down to 14. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now, does Chris have a follow-up? I believe his hand is, like, Rekindling Phoenix, Hazard, Lightning Strike. I thought it was two Rekindling Phoenixes, but e either way, he, that's not anything he can really cast. We might, drop, see him, drop lightning strike. we might see him just fire off the Lightning Strike here on Dakota's end step to just use the mana. Well, since he used the Abraid, he might actually want to consider keeping it if he gets to that Gear Hulk turn. Oh, well, does... Another kingpin. That's Chris have superior. another abraid? I don't think he does. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, then I don't like using the lightning strike on uh, or using the abraid on the kingpin. I prefer to use this lightning strike. Yeah. Because now we can't answer a gear hulk. All right. Well, lightning strike going upstairs. All right. We got another mm -hmm. land. Another mountain. It's kind of ironic. You miss a land drop. Now we flood out. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. That's deck shuffling, right? <laughs> well, he's definitely going to slam down a Phoenix here. Yeah. And then Dakota's going to untap and contempt it. Yep. That card's so expensive right now. Uh, honestly, I, I'd be surprised if it wasn't $50 by the time Dominaria comes out. It's What's not War Elves? 50. Are you kidding me? It's, uh, it's uh, I think, I actually just bought some from Star City Games that I, I believe I, I, this is the first time I've ever bought a standard card played to save like three dollars per copy yeah i mean that's fair it's a twenty dollar card for a bad removal spell Veraska's contempt yeah i think dakota actually has Veraska contempt fatal push in hand so we can just clear the board this turn best case scenario here we go one dead phoenix mm-hmm and then if he draws a land he can gear hulk contempt this whatever four drop chris has Another Which one. looks like another Phoenix. Alright. And, and a Dread Wanderer. Alright. Well, that's not that's not a bad turn. He's doing his best. Uh, so we're going to push... Get out Zombie. I don't know how much I like pushing the Dread Wanderer over the Scrap Heap. It's just more... Like, if he does find a way to remove the Contraband, I think I'd want the Scrap Heap in play. So I'd rather push that one. Um, yeah. Also, cards, uh, creatures in graveyard is not infinite for Chris, so it's a lot harder for Scrappy to come back multiple times than Dreadwander is. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Dakota's remembering his contraband kingpin triggers, unlike last week. That's good. Hey, he's learning. Yeah. Step up. Contraband kingpin is a scry, right? Yeah, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you scry one. He did take advantage of the recording and uh, go back and watch his games. I think it was, that was another thing, like, we missed it too. We realized, like, two turns later, it was like, oh, 
he was supposed to scry. Yeah, contempt is uh, taking care of the most difficult creature in uh, standard right now, right? It's one of them. Yeah, I'm not going to say uh, Veracity Contempt doesn't earn its $20 price tag. It definitely works for its price. Then people play things like Bristling Hydra and you just cry. Yeah, it was, yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty necessary for these days. So does what does Dakota have in hand with his six untapped mana? On Crop Crasher is a real good draw for Chris, so... Uh, yeah. I'm not sure I like that attack from him. I mean, I guess... Yeah, uh, he's got a Glimmer. Is, are we doing this in response to On Crop Crasher? Uh, or before combat? Because the move, the little thing Chris did there with the... Uh, Signifies that he wants to try to go to combat. So. Yeah, and exert it. So Okay, so he's going to Contempt. Yeah, Contempt is earning its, uh, earning, earning its price. It's mm -hmm. like in this game, at least. Yeah. So his last card in hand is Glimmer. That's, that's pretty good for Dakota. That, if I have a card left over, that is probably the card I want left over the most, except maybe Torrential Gear Hulk. It's not just the same thing at this point. I mean, one is a 5-6. That also casts Glimmer or Veracity Contempt. Or yeah. whatever you want. Eh, you know. Oh, we're going to get in here. I mean, he's not blocking, right? No, he is. Well... He could be blocking with the Dread Wanderers. Oh, you mean uh, Chris isn't blocking. You're yeah. right. And I like this uh, block by Dakota. It Chris can't get back the Dread Wanderer this turn, so he has to wait till next turn to do that. Yeah. Honestly, if I was Chris, I'd probably just sort of swung with the 2-1 and the 3-2. Uh, sure, it only pushes through 2 damage uh, once the lifelink occurs and all that. But you want to keep something back and to like to start like chaining back Dread Wanderers forever to mm -hmm. block your Hulk. And Dakota just drew another Glimmer. Oh, that's good. That's good. So would you cast the Glimmer here main phase to try to hit a land drop? Or? I wouldn't. Um, I would wait until Chris does something. If Chris draws something like a Hazaret or a Kindling Phoenix, uh, I want to make sure that I have the answer that I need for it. Blue-Black Control has a lot of different answers that it could have. It could have Moment of Craving... Essence Scatter, Fatal Push, Disallow. Now, really, in this case, between like Fatal Push, Moment of Craving, Essence Scatter, which one you want in this case. So, wait till you have the most information about what Chris has drawn for the turn. He might also just bring back Dread Wanderer and not use his mana at all. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's kind of just on, like, on the uh, recurring graveyard threats thing. He's got a Earthshaker in his graveyard too, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of Chris's out right now is getting to a point which uh, that Earthshaker. Yeah, another land would be like probably Chris's best draw. Or because I don't think Hazaret isn't really something he wants here. Yeah, now we're gonna see the Glimmer because Dakota knows he doesn't need anything like Essence Scatter. He doesn't need uh So he's got a Contraband Kingpin and I wish I could see. Yeah, fortunately we're not getting a great would look. You he's keep gonna keep. Probably. So um, it seems like a relatively like. Especially because yeah, Chris has so many two ones in play. A moment of craving. He found a moment of craving. Oh, that's really good. Do you might find moment of craving push? Should he get rid of the kingpin? Yeah, that push wasn't there before, so. Okay. Yeah, we just gained a free life. And he blocked. Yeah, so he took one damage this turn. He took no damage this turn, because that dreadwater wasn't attacking. It entered the battlefield tapped. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, just gained a life. Mm-hmm. We still get to untap with Glimmer. Yep, taking a And it looks like we found a moment of craving, too. So this game's just about wrapped. Oh, doggy. Uh, lightning, lightning strike points. you. I would have killed the Kingpin. I'll say, that Kingpin's causing so much problems. So. Yeah. I, I would have killed the Kingpin. I wonder if uh, Chris has a cut to Rubens in his deck. That'd be a very good answer here. I can see that as a sideboard card. Um, here we have a Phoenix. All right. So I expect like, Dakota to glimmer in response. Yeah, I feel like this is more black red mid range than aggro. Yeah, although the Dread Wanderers, I mean, yeah, lead themselves to more aggressive bent. He also, we know he has like Bone Courier in his deck. Stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, mono because mono red aggro can go bigger and be more of a mid range deck post board. I think that's worth yeah. seeing out of here. 
So it looks like we're letting the Phoenix resolve. I mean, I guess he doesn't have, like, an actual answer to the Phoenix anyways. I guess if he... Well, you could draw Essence Scatter here. He might not have it in his deck. That'd be... I would be shocked. I agree, but... Uh, I guess his plan for beating the Phoenix is uh, another Vraska's Contempt, so... And I think he kept two lands. Oh, he's got a Contempt in hand. Oh, okay. That makes sense, then. Yeah, okay. Is that number three? Uh, that would be the fourth one cast this game. And, yeah, Chris isn't even going to have any more of it. He's That's enough for him. He scoop him up. Yeah, we're going to the next game. Going to game three. All right. So, uh, Chris was using his uh, burn spells pretty interestingly. Yeah, I think he should have saved a few. I think he should have cast Lightning Strike when he cast an Abrade, and I think he should have killed the Contraband Kingpin with that last Lightning Strike instead of going to the face with it. I, I, I agree. Uh, I, I get it. Like, you know, you play an aggro, you want to be aggressive, but you can't be aggressive if a 1-4 lifelink is uh, preventing all your Yeah, batteries. you have to keep control of the board, and if he had a braid mm -hmm. to kill that Gearhawk, I don't... That game wasn't over. No, that game was still going to for go a to long had, time. Dakota had no way to kill Chris. If we had an advantage bar, and he still had that a braid, I, I want to say it's towards Chris there. Uh, I would say, sli yeah, slightly towards Chris. Not by a ton, because Dakota still had a lot of really good draws in his deck. Yeah, no, I, I agree that he had a lot of good draws, but, uh, like, none of his removal was really answering anything. Like, it was just stuff yeah. that kept coming back. So. We should get an advantage bar. Sounds fun. Yeah. Then we could have it, like, as a... Right in front of us, with, like, a soundboard slider. Yeah, just, like, so we can just, like, move it. Where are we at? All right. Yeah. So, uh, and besides being a... Awesome commentator for the stream every once in a while. Justin, what else do you do here? Uh, I work with store. Uh, I work behind the store. I, I do all the uh, Facebook stuff, so I do all the social media. Uh, okay, so our uh, he, he's got jokes. That's yeah. Funny. Uh, anyways, yeah. So I, I uh, work behind the counter. I do all the social media. I do the marketing for the store. That stuff. Uh, we also buy sell cards. Uh, stuff like that. You know. Uh, standard retail stuff on top of marketing so cool it's pretty fun uh, it's definitely not the uh, hardest job I've ever had in my life so. it doesn't sound like it no you get to work with magic cards all day there could be worse things you could be doing yeah and I've done them have you ever tried to sell them TVs before I've not no, I you ever done suggested. flagging for construction crews uh, I've worked demolition for construction okay you know what flagging is? No. Flagging is the guy who holds the stop slow sign when they're, like, paving the roads and there's only right. one lane. It's horrible. <laughs> I would imagine that to be, like, one boring day. Oh, it was one boring summer. One boring summer. I, I stood in, uh, this was eastern Ohio. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of St. Clairsville. Uh, it sounds familiar. I don't know if I could ever place it on a map. I couldn't, and I lived a summer there, basically. It's two hours east of Columbus. And okay. we drove there. We had to wake up at 3.30 in the morning that to drive out there. Miserable. And then I stood there for about normally around seven to eight hours. Less, and less good Raging Goblin. With, yeah, and with no uh, cell phone connection. Okay. And I f turned the sign around. Sometimes I had to walk a little bit. It was oh, great. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, at least my experience with Demolition was a little bit more interesting. Uh so, like, I got to spend, like, ten minutes a day or whatever. Uh, it was about, like, an hour a day ripping down walls and plaster. That sounds then, fun. Yeah, like, that, that's about the hour. Uh, but then, like, the rest of the day, for, like, the rest of the week, you spend just cleaning it out of the room. Mm. Taking it to a dumpster. So, demolition sounds fun. You get to break stuff, but then you got to clean it up. And yeah, that's, that's the part I would enjoy. It's much less interesting. So, I think Chris is having the opposite issue. Okay. I think we're we're having slight autofocus problems when players are moving their hand. You've been seeing it like go a little in and out of focus. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's just something an issue we've been having with the camera, and I think they're doing their best to fix that right now. Yeah. That was a very. That was a stylish one. Stylish attack. Yeah. I wish I could do that like every time. Yeah. Full flip. Random like dexterity things in Magic are just like really weird. I had someone. Tell me that I had did the cleanest Mishra's bobble reveal uh, that they've ever seen yesterday. It's like showing it to your opponent and then putting it back. 
I was like, okay. I was like, I've just gotten so used to that. Just like picking it up. Like, mm -hmm. look at it. There you go. Not even kind of interested in the card. Yeah, so it looks like Chris is having the opposite problem he had last game. The fact that he's no black mana. He did have Essence Scatter, so. Uh, yeah, I again, I was going to say, I'd be very surprised Dakota didn't have Essence Scatter. That card's at an all-time high right now. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. But you never know. Some days uh, people like to keep it spicy, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you found the black mana. Unfortunately, I believe that's a canyon slough. I can't tell if it's a slough or a summit. It looks a like a slough. Yeah, it's a slough slaw, whatever. But yeah, you know, this is one of those uh, decks, times where people, if you stumble against blue-black control, it's weird because they don't kill you quickly, but they still punish you. Yeah, like, they, you, like they'll drown you in card advantage. Mm -hmm. it is just like you give them a turn to just untap, play Glimmer of Genius... It's pretty much over. Turn like the first couple turns of just like playing land three two uh, isn't, isn't going to really do much. Yeah. Now we can just play our tap land. Then we can like disallow, push, glimmer. Dakota's got it all. He can just sit back. He could probably uh, let like a computer play this game for him and just win. Not have to think or make any decisions. All right, so. I would imagine he's going to play that land tapped this turn to try to get, like give him the most available turn. To yeah, like that's definitely. Six. He has things to do on three and one and also four, so it doesn't look like he needs five mana. I'll say he's got literally infinite cards in his hand, so I'll be surprised to see what Chris does to get out of this. I think it involves uh, playing a lot of sticky threats and hoping one of them can get him there. And unfortunately, I don't see that many sticky threats in his hand. So, we have three mana, we have an Oncrop Crasher. Oncrop. Uh, he's also got Dread Wanderer, so he's going to double spell this turn. Yeah, so and that's nice. definitely a good way to get him out of this. Yeah. Looks like Dakota is not going to counter this. Looks I like do, I do like the plan of not exerting here, so... Oh, definitely. Well, there's nothing to exert. Well, you can exert on the scrap heap. Give Actually, it I'm, it's possible it says an opponent control. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm Wait. Oh, sure. about about to say, are we pushing the Oncrop Crasher? Because that's not gonna work. So we're gonna take three here. We're gonna go to ten. Ten. That's kind of low. Another, another creature. All right. Uh. So interesting. He didn't have anything. There's a moment of moment craving. Of craving right? yeah, Card's say. real good. Yeah, that's, that's some good time. Unless you kill one. Oncrop Crasher, basically fog from the Dread Wander, and then also play Glimmer in a turn. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be nice. Oh, or we could just play this Golden Demise in our hand. How does that sound? Uh, if I was Chris, I'd want just about any other thing to happen. So. Yeah. Yep, free two for one. That's and Chris is nowhere near being able to bring back that Dread Wander. He still has three cards in hand. Yeah. I think, uh, honestly, I'd be more interested in doing the Moment of Craving Glimmer plan. I would, too. Also, because if Chris plays something like a Hazard at this turn, you're not going to... Well, I think one of his cards is Disallow. Yeah, he has Disallow. But if Chris plays a Hazard at that turn, it can attack. Yeah. Because Chris had three cards in hand, so even if he draws a card, plays land, plays hazard, he'd have to play another one drop to get that two yeah. attack. So Chris's hand looks stocked with some miscellaneous one drops and another on crop crasher. So this is going to die. It's going to meet its moment. I think he's going to find a vampire. It's more or less what's going to happen. And so, yep, here's going to be the moment of craving. Dakota's going to go up to 12. And then take one. And down to 11. I wonder how uh, aggressive Chris will be. Do you think he'll just throw the goblin at him? Well, it has to tap to oh, really? be thrown, yeah. It is not Mog Fanatic with haste. And if I'm Dakota here, I think I'm just going to pass this urn. We just drew Essence Scatter, and we also have Disallow in hand and Glimmer. So we can Disallow Essence Scatter if Chris double spells something. We can Glimmer Essence Scatter. But what I really want to do is I want to play Scarab, Scarab God. God. Yeah, he's a Scarab God in his hand, and I want to do it 
play it with one piece of interaction up, whether that be Essence Scatter, well, the, whether that be Moment of Craving, Fatal Push. Because if he gets to untap with the Scarab God, this game will be over. Yeah, I'll say, if he played Scarab God there, and Chris would just go, like, uh, I don't know if he's got Chandra in the deck, but, like, Chandra and, like, Minus and ping it off. Like, that's what kept me in the game, playing against Blue Black Control, it's just the Chandra. Like, yeah. Oh, trust me, I saw. Yeah. That game was nuts. Uh, it also won me the game in the top eight versus Bernie, so... Yeah, that's the one we didn't see, but I, yeah. I assumed that was probably something that kept you in the game. Well, uh, like, what it was is, like, I bluffed into a Torrential Gearhawk, like, I knew he had it, I saw his hand, mm -hmm. and I just attacked straight in with a 3-1, and one, uh, three one, and I had two cards in my hand, and Bernie just assumed I had something, and the cards in my hand were lands, so he blocked with the Gearhawk and let me down tick the Chandra to get rid of it. Oh. Uh, and that play lost him the match the game essentially i believe it's the the next turn i drew a hazard and was able just to keep mm -hmm. double spelling so i think chris right now is trying to just uh it looks like dakota's deciding whether he wanted to counter that or not you don't want to counter that those don't matter yeah, uh, yeah you're gonna you really want to be able to cast glimmer of genius here so you can guarantee finding a land if you have to glimmer essence scatter that's fine i think what he really wants to find honestly is a gear hawk uh, yeah, Gearhawk would be good. Chris, instant speed. I agree with instant, instant speed. speed. Honestly, like, if you're against blue back control, wouldn't you rather uh, keep that in the graveyard? Why? Uh, to keep Scarab God from doing anything relevant. That is true. So that is that interaction, yeah. Targets. Although this actually is exactly what Chris wanted to happen here. Yeah, like, the... Everything that's happening is a good turn for Chris. Like, yeah. You want Scrap Heap in the graveyard. Like, you got two counter spells out of his hand. I guess, like, Dakota's feeling, like, on the back foot, so he's going to slam down the Scarab God this turn. Yeah. I and don't know how I feel about this. Cause these... I mean, he has to do it. The only other thing he can do is Glimmer. Well, and if he untaps the Scarab God, it's still really good. There's a Kingpin in Dakota's graveyard, right? I believe so. I'm That's definitely there, something. So. Yeah, there it got, it blocked a scrap heap grounder and that got pinged off. Yeah. So there, there it is. There's a king pen there. So, yeah. If I'm Chris, I don't attack. I return a dread wanderer here and just leave scrap heap at instant speed. Yep, that's what I would do. It gets real awkward if Dakota draws uh, golden demise. So I would expect there to be two in his de in his sideboard. So I guess there's two in the deck right now. What Chris really wants to find right now, if he has it, and uh, it's something that I've been seeing mono red decks pick up, and I don't know why. Whoa! I do see that he was very interested in scrap heap coming back, but he will need to tap black mana for that. That is true, but he exiled Earthshaker Kenra to do it. Which he has two on crap crashers in his graveyard. Get rid of one of those. Yeah. Two on crop, like even even a dread wander, really. Like uh, at this point, I think you're you have to put a dread wander in play too. Yeah, but like that's one of his big late game threats, in the Earthshaker Kenra. Yeah. Like, so that that's pretty shocking. But anyway, what I was gonna say is I've seen some uh, mono red decks running puncturing blow, in their sideboard. Puncture. You remember what that draft common is? Uh, is it white? No, it's red. Oh, then I have no idea. It's two red red for a sorcery, it deals five damage to target creature. Sounds right. And if it dies, you exile it. Okay, okay. Uh, so I remember playing that cons, like, two, uh, yeah. there was, like, Burn Away, which did something Yeah, similar. that was, like, six mana, though. It, no, it was five and dealt six damage. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Yeah, puncturing. here's Puncturing Blow. Well, I mean... I mean, if you need to answer a Scarab God or a Kindling Phoenix, this will do it. it, it yeah, it was, like, At it, Sorcery it, Speed. It, it was in the set for a reason, right? Yeah. It was in Hour of Devastation for a reason. Oh, you're right. Burn Away is 5 mana and instant speed. Yeah, like, Burn Away, I remember seeing play just because the Salt Eye decks there. Salt oh, Eye yeah. Control for a long time was real good. Salt Eye Control, Salt Eye Whip. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Burn Away was pretty important for the token decks. Cause... But then they printed Ugin. And all both decks died. Yeah. Because Ugin was absurdly good against all so of those. to keep reanimating here. Um, honestly, I, if I'm Chris, I absolutely attack with, uh, Scrap Heap's Ground here right now. Uh, yeah, I would too. Uh, so he could... I, I just really don't want Scrap Heap in play is the problem. 
I guess something cute he could do is if you target something in his, he could use both of his firebrands to put a scrap heap in a graveyard and then exile his. Target. So the real question is: Is Chris aware of that interaction? I, I guess he. Yeah, he might not be. Because like that's something that it's come up for me, but that doesn't mean. Oh, so in, in response, response to the Dreadwander, we get back the Dreadwander, huh. which enters the battlefield tapped. It will enter tapped. So we'll get the. Uh, players to realize that. Yeah. Okay. I love how you can see on the camera when the stream runner is talking to them. Like, There's like this what? backup. What? Oh, right. Wait. Why is it over on his side now? Now I'm confused. Still, still tapped. Maybe they're calling a judge over to see. It's possible. Yeah, to see what happens. Yeah, that is actually a trigger you can respond to. Yep. The thing we were talking about with Scrap Heap Scrounger is that Scrap Heap, as part of the cost activate ability, exiles a creature. Wait, so now I'm just confused. Okay, so... I'm gonna look up the wording on Dreadwander. He activated it in response to Scarab God. But I thought Dreadwander had to be a sorcery. You had to activate that ability as a sorcery. Uh, activate this ability only time you can cast a sorcery, so, yeah. Yeah, he so... Can, he can't do that. Okay. Now it's back on Dakota's side. Alright, we figured it out. Yeah, and this works out really well for Dakota because... Scarab God is really good at incidentally, uh, hating on the graveyards. And Chris has very incidental graveyard interactions. So yeah. this will be... So what's Chris hand? We're Kindling Phoenix and a Braid. So he's done use the Scarab God. Like, you have to attack all out here. Oh, yeah. You're, you're not winning the game if you're not attacking. You have to very least attack with your two power creatures. Yeah, like, you don't... So... It's possible he doesn't want to attack with the one ones. This might be just better as uh, face damage. Dakota has to care about. Yeah, I don't know. Like if if I'm Dakota, I'm not blocking a one one if he's attacking with all these things. Mm -hmm. And no passing attack. Turn, yeah, passing turn's definitely wrong. No attack. Interesting. Okay, so you attack with. Oh, we else. missed our scarab god trigger. Yep. And I believe that was Dakota being like, "Oops, I missed my scarab god trigger." Chris might be nice and give it to him anyways, but he done drew a card, so I didn't. I wouldn't take it. Yeah. Uh, so, four, so, one, two, three, four. And a braid gets rid of the Scarab God for that turn. Yeah. It is down to five. So you're trying to figure out if there's any way Chris can kill him next turn? No, I was actually figuring out if he did attack last turn, what would have happened. Ah, okay. Like, how would the rest of this game play out? So it looks like we have attack with the Dreadwander and then a block in response uh, sack. Interesting. Uh, so we're playing defensive, is Chris now? That's that's not your game plan, Chris. No, because now Dakota can just reanimate the Contraband Kingpin. Mm -hmm. That's four power of lifelink damage. What about the lightning strike? Does that do it? So I'll be honest here. I think if Chris would attack last turn, he might have the he might he might have won this turn. Yeah, so we would have gotten in one, two. He would have got in four damage, and then this turn, uh, Dakota would have had two blockers. So he'd gotten in another two damage. So he'd been at four, then uh, so another two damage with five points of burn. So that would have been nine damage over these last two turns. Yeah, that would have been. It would have been close. Yeah, like, I mean, and also, assuming Dakota didn't cast another spell other than Scarab God. Yeah, it, but that also prevents Chris, because Chris gets to get the Scarab God off the table. And that forces Dakota to replay the Scarab God, which means he can't activate it, which means he can't get a four-power lifelinker in play. Yeah. Because yeah. now we just can't attack. Well, and now he is attacking. Yeah. Oh, whoa, no, 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 reanimate. Gain the life. Oh, jeez. All right. So we take three, go to five. I mean, that's probably the best possible block Chris could hope for. Yeah, and now if Dakota tries to target any of his... Oh, Dakota's five. Grass is Contempt in his hand. Okay. 
Yeah, see, it's the last turn. He would have got stuck with the Scarab God or Vraska's Contempt. Yeah. So, hopefully uh, Chris goes back and watches this. And mm -hmm. See, now, if I was Dakota, I would have done this the other way around. I would have blocked the Dread Wanderer and then exiled the Scrap Heap Scrounger huh. with yeah, the yeah. Vraska Contempt because the Scrap Heap Scrounger will be interrupting your Scarab Gods. Yeah. So, it seems interesting that he didn't sacrifice the uh, Goblin in response to It was to tapped. He couldn't. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm just going to forever get that wrong. Why can't it just actually be a better monk than Etic? Because then it would be really good. That's just, really like, good. two points of damage. We can't have one mana, two power creatures with haste. I'm pretty sure we have those. Not standard. Although, we're kind of getting one with the new Dominaria cards. Uh, the red wizard that you have two instant or sorceries in your graveyard. It costs one? It costs one mana. Okay. If you have two or more instant or sorceries in your graveyard, it's a one-two. Okay. It gets plus one, plus zero, oh, and haste. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, no, if you have two instant or sorceries, it turns into a goblin guide with no drawback. All right. Yeah. I promise you, the first deck I'm building when Dominaria comes out is blue-red wizard aggro. Blue-red wizard aggro. Because I'm playing wizard bolt and wizard counterspell. Yeah, Wizard Bolt and Wizard Counterspell. Yeah, those are pretty sweet. I'm excited to mm -hmm. see those. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, and Dakota number. has it all now. Uh, Chris seems pretty done with uh, this game, to be honest. Yeah. There's also the... Uh, I don't remember the name of the wizard, but there's, like, a name of the Cinderwind. Name of the Cinderwind. So it's one red-blue for a 2-2 two -two with haste and flying. when it basically has prowess for all of your wizards. Okay, yeah, no, I, I remember these. Uh, I don't. I never read the names, because the names don't really matter much to me. I just read the uh, abilities of the cards. I just randomly remembered names. Yeah. But do you know what other creatures that are currently in standard are wizards? Can I think of any good wizards? No. So there's Soulscar Mage as a wizard. Okay. Siren Stormcaller is a wizard. Siren. So it's one blue for a 1-1 one, one with flying that you can play uh, a blue and counter sacrifice it, counter target a uh, spell that targets you or a permanent you control. Okay. It's okay, just a yeah, one-mana yeah. wizard yeah, that lets me play counter spell in turn two. Siren wizard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Champion of Wits. Okay, no, that's the best wizard I've heard Yeah, so that one's just great. Uh, and then there's some, like, mediocre two-mana wizards. There's a two-mana 2-1 two with... Prowess and Afflict 2. Where did we... Which I would probably play. Uh, Merlin, Malin, what list are you talking about? Are you talking about these players' lists? Uh, if we have them, they'd be on topdeckproductions.com. There's a chance that we just don't have these lists. Um, for Dakota, I would expect it to be look like any kind of stock blue-black control lists. Mind Sensor, Baral. Baral seems pretty interesting to me. Oh, Nimble Obstructionist. That's the other one I couldn't think Silver of. Silver Gill Adept? Well, I'm not playing Merfolk. Well, it's Wizard. But it costs, like, five. Okay. I really like Baral there. So, I am... This is going to be an aggro deck, but it looks like uh, Dakota's going to wrap up that game. Not yep. surprising, given how remo much removal he had in the later stages of the game. Just able to stay at a higher life total. Yeah. But yeah, so that's going to be it for round one here. We'll be back to you in not very long. These players did take a while to complete their match, but it yep. shouldn't be too much longer, guys. We'll see you in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. Yep.